On today's menu is a recipe that I learned years back from my aunt. This video is all packed up with tips and tricks on how to make the meatballs juicy and soft that will melt in your mouth but at the same time will stay intact in the gravy. Hey everyone, Namaskar and welcome to Curries with Bombi. Starting with making the ginger garlic paste. So in my blender jar I have taken few garlic cloves and ginger along with a few tablespoons of water. You need a smooth paste like this. Next I will grind a large sandwich bread in my food processor. Do not worry if you do not have a food processor. You can do this in your blender as well. Or I will tell you another technique later on in the video. And here is Bo very irritated with all that noise from the machines. He thinks I am in danger and the world is coming to an end. Ok guys coming right into making the meatballs. I always buy boneless skinless chicken thighs and grind them in my food processor. You need a very fine mince. Guys, please use chicken thigh meat for this recipe. Ok, I used a tablespoon from that ginger garlic paste, two heaped tablespoons of finely chopped onions and one green chilli finely chopped which is totally optional, the fresh bread crumbs, a well beaten egg and here is the tip regarding the bread if you do not want to grind it. You can mix the bread with the egg separately and that will soften the bread to a mush and then you can add it in that way. Now guys add very little salt like less than half a teaspoon because the meatballs do soak up a lot of gravy. I even added some freshly cracked black pepper and just a teaspoon of oil. Now mix everything very well just like kneading a dough. You can also add finely chopped coriander leaves to this. I regret that I forgot and don't know how I could forget my beloved coriander. Next coming to forming the koftas, apply oil to your palms and shape them into however small or large balls you want. It doesn't have to be perfectly round because nobody will be measuring the radius and circumference of the meatballs while eating. Ok, after you are done forming the meatballs, put this plate of meatballs in your refrigerator when you are making the gravy and take them out just when you plan on adding them to the gravy. Next step making the gravy. Always use a wide pan for this recipe. In that way the meatballs can be laid out in a single layer and they will not break by banging on each other. I use 3 tablespoons of oil. Guys please please adjust the proportion of oil according to your preference. When it comes to oil please do not stick to the amount I am using. That will make your viewing this video more comfortable to your eyes. I am here just to guide you through the process but the proportion of ingredients is all in your hands. Once the oil gets hot lower the heat to medium and add finely chopped onions along with just a pinch of salt to soften down the onions. I love using a lot of onions for this recipe because it gives a sweetness to the gravy. Fry the onions on medium heat till they just turn a little golden in color. In the meantime we will start prepping the yogurt. First tip whenever using yogurt for curries, take it out from the refrigerator at least 30 minutes before it enters the hot pan. Spices go in, a teaspoon of turmeric powder, the sunshine of Indian cuisine. I used a tablespoon of Kashmiri red chilli powder. Please use less than what I stated to start with. You can always add later but it is very hard to take out the heat once it is added. If you do not get Kashmiri chilli powder, mix just a fourth of a teaspoon of regular chilli powder to two and a half teaspoons of paprika. I also added a tablespoon of ground coriander and five tablespoons of water. Next tip for yogurt. Stir the yogurt very well till you get a very smooth texture. I always use a whisk like this but a fork will also work. And please excuse me for all that mess that is showing up on the screen down the side of the bowl. I am the person behind my camera so I sometimes miss out those details in the middle of handling everything. As you can see now here the bowl is dancing up in front and I cannot reach my camera to fix it. Ok I want to focus on the main tip here that is the yogurt should be smooth like this. Getting back to the onions. Stir them frequently so that they get browned up together evenly. You do not want a deep dark brown color as that will destroy the taste and color of the gravy. When the onions reach this beautiful color with little bit of browning on them, the next in line is the ginger garlic paste. Fry the ginger garlic paste for about 2 minutes so that their raw smell goes away. 
After that, it's yoga time. And here comes the important tips again. Heat off or take your pan off the burner if using an electric or induction stove top. Splash of cold tap water to bring down the temperature of the pan. Stir the yogurt one more time and add it. Immediately after adding the yogurt, and I cannot stress enough how important is that word immediately. So immediately mix everything very well. You cannot let go of your spoon now. Switch your stove back on to medium low and keep stirring until you start seeing bubbles. Now initially you will see little tiny dots of the milk solid separating. But please don't get panicked seeing that. Just keep stirring, do not let go of your spoon and soon you will see everything coming together. Keep stirring on medium low heat till you see the oil coming out around the sides and you will get this jam like texture. See how that oil is dancing and bubbling around the sides? That is an indication that it is time for the next ingredients to go in. At this point I like adding a teaspoon of sugar which is again totally optional so please leave it out if you have any concerns. Next a cup of hot water goes along with a little water that I used to rinse out all that spice bowl goodness. Again I used a little more than a cup of water but that doesn't mean you have to stick to that. Add less water if you want a thicker gravy or add a little more and adjust the consistency according to your preference. Now is the time to add salt. Then cover on for 3 minutes on medium high heat. After 3 minutes lift off and in goes a teaspoon of garam masala powder and now you can take out the chicken meatballs from the refrigerator and add them to the gravy. Remember guys adjust the heat of your stove to low when adding the meatballs and add them in a single layer. This is what my aunt told me to follow. She never fries the meatballs before adding them to the gravy. In this way they soak up all that gravy goodness and in turn gets juicy and soft. And then remove any spoons that are in front of you because from this point you cannot allow any spoon to enter that pan. You can increase the heat to medium low and wait for 5 minutes. Please note that my pan is uncovered now. After 5 minutes gently rotate the pan. No spoons allowed, just rotating the pan and your meatballs won't break. After that cover the pan partially with a lid and allow a little space for that steam to escape. If you cover the pan totally then the trapped pressure building up from the steam may lead some of the meatballs to break. Ok so simmer it on low heat for 15 minutes. Remember that every 5 minutes you need to give a little shaky shaky to the pan to ensure that everything is happening at an even rate. After 15 minutes I love adding just half a teaspoon of dried fenugreek leaves that is kasuri methi. Again it is totally optional and it will still be delicious if you do not use it. And I forgot to mention about this that if you are allergic to dairy then you can use half a cup of pureed tomatoes or a fourth of a cup of tomato puree in place of yogurt. Then this time I did not forget my coriander leaves. The gravy is smooth and delicious and those chicken meatballs are pillowy soft. They are juicy and they will melt in your mouth. Please send me your feedback after trying this recipe and please smash that like button for me. Bye bye.